Okay. All right. So again, <laughs> I'll quickly kind of go an intro. Let me go back to that slide. Okay. So yeah, thank you again. Uh, we are all set now to start. Um, so uh, yeah, what I wanted to kind of talk to you about is how we are managing the Parallax Hangouts, uh, how you get the tweet, the short links and everything. So we are doing a bunch of things in that one flow. Um, so I want to cover all the things that we are doing there so that you can use it to manage events that you are kind of doing or if you, there are different things within these so you can use it for different kind of use cases that you have. So the the, the five things that we'll cover today and we try to cover all the five. Um, the first thing is trigger conditions uh, to select specific events from the calendar. Um, extracting URLs, so to get the Teams meeting link, um, we, we are like, using some flow expressions to extract the URL. We are creating an ICS file, so you can create an ICS file within Power Automate so that you can share the ICS file. Um, Rebrandly API, it's similar to the Bitly kind of thing, so it's kind of a short link generator, but we'll uh, use it to create and update short links. And then the last thing, it's the bit of the complex one is the OAuth 1.0 connection to connect to Twitter API using Azure functions and stuff so that I can send direct messages to some people within the Power Addicts, um, kind of some, some people who can then promote it more. So to send DMs, uh, we're using the Twitter API. So, uh, at any point, if you have any question, feel free to chat. I mean, put it in the chat or unmute yourself. Let's uh, let's do this more interactive. I know we have a few people here, but yeah, feel free to jump in anytime and ask any questions. All right. So uh, the first thing, let's uh, get into the uh, trigger conditions. So the trigger conditions, if you haven't yet uh, explored it. Uh, it's something that you can uh, uh, put in in any of your triggers in Power Automate uh, so that it triggers only when it like that trigger meets those conditions. I mean, as simple as that. But yeah, uh, there's a video from Audrey uh, where she talks about all these trigger um, conditions. And let me paste that in the Teams chat. Uh, let's So, and I'll be sharing this slide deck uh, as well. So yeah, um, so this video kind of talks about all the ways you can use trigger conditions. So, so let's start um, kind of showing the flow. So I have the flow created, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start it from scratch in here. So let's, what we wanna do is we want to, so the way this flow would start is um, I'll create an event in my calendar and from there it kind of starts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the Outlook trigger. So Office 365 Outlook when a new event is created. And I'll select the calendar. Um, and then you would see is um, in the settings. So there are different ways. So I could have, I think there is within the advanced option. So I can um, order by or top count, but the one thing which is kind of missing here is some, in some of the uh, actions I've seen, you can put an more data query, but you don't have it over here. So um, we'll use the settings and then we'll use a trigger condition. So the way that you wanna set these up, and it, so what I want to do is I want to trigger this and we for the demo purpose, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create uh, a Q and A event uh, for next month uh, and we'll do, like we'll post it on Twitter and all that stuff. So uh, what I want is I want the, the trigger body. So let's copy that. Uh, uh, let me copy that expression quickly. 
Oh, you're not probably seeing the screen that I'm working on. Let me switch that. Share screen, screen one. Okay, you should be able to see my screen now. Um, are you, uh, I'm, I hope I'm sharing my screen now. Um, can you guys see the flow trigger condition settings? Can somebody confirm that? Hmm. Okay. All right. Just want to make sure it's showing it. Okay. Um, so yeah, the trigger condition, what I'm going to use is, uh, this contains thing and let's zoom in a bit. Um, so yeah, it's contains trigger body, uh, subject to so subject as the event kind of subject. And if it has Q and a, this trigger would, uh, kind of run. So you can have, um, something like we can add multiple conditions. So if you add, it will do an and operation. So it has to meet all the conditions. But um, if you just want to use like or, you will have to put it in an expression. So it'd be like or that contains, and then you put another expression uh, condition equals something. So then you can use that to kind of choose like either or kind of a thing. So you can. Uh, make your expressions however you want here but yeah you'll have to i know it's not very kind of <laughs> low code friendly but uh, this is how it is uh so yeah you uh, once you have specified this so what we'll do is i'll click on done uh and then we click save i uh, actually need an action so let's just put a compose action. Okay. And then we will uh, compose the subject just to kind of make sure. So we will go each kind of step that I'll do. I'll make, we'll run it so that we can confirm our flow is running fine. So this will be demo um, manage events. Let's hit save. Fix invalid expression. Ah, guess I didn't. Did I not remove a comma or something? Uh, hmm. That's strange. Trigger body subject. Hmm. Done. Save. Come on. What's wrong there? Uh, let's remove it and add it again. Seems right. Yeah, I think as you're mentioning, Geeta, I think that might be the thing. Might have to remove the trigger and add it again. So yeah, these are the things that you encounter on a regular basis <laughs> with flow. So let's put it again. A new event is created calendar calendar and then let's put the settings trigger condition let's type it out as Gita recommended uh, trigger body 
not good at it and I have to find it. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, ticket body, subject, this should be Q and A, done. Please save this. Okay, now you need an input. Okay, so this is saving now. So yeah, it's one way to kind of, I've found a hack, I guess, and I'll show you. So let, let's run this first. So I'll go to my Outlook. Uh, not, let's do Office and Outlook. And I'll create the event. Okay, let's see. Let's create, go to the calendar and I'll create the event. So new event, come on, ah, it's just slow, yep, Matthew, so uh, I agree with you totally, it's, it's kind of, this has happened to me before as well, whenever I've done live. Um, we am like, yeah, this should work exactly the way I want it to, but it doesn't. Uh, so let's do like a March Q and A um, session. So I'll set it up as uh, let's do maybe let's put it on a Saturday again, um, 21st March. Let's do it on 28. <laughs> um, let's put it the same time, 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. I already selected it as a Teams meeting and uh, we'll save it. And this should uh, run, kind of trigger our flow. So um, let's go back. This is another thing which you'll see. If, even if you have saved it, you'll keep seeing this. Just like say, okay. <laughs> another quirky, quirky thing in flow, which is always <laughs> not, you always feel like, oh, did I save it? Did I not save it? And you end up saving it again. It's still not run, so we'll give it a minute. Um, while it kind of does that, let me quickly show you. So the way to kind of find those expression or write those expressions would be, um, I've found this hack, I mean, not hack as such, but this is one way to uh, not kind of write those expressions on your own. So the compose uh, data operations data operations. Um, I know that's a thing with the filter. I mean, I think any of these should work, but yeah, I, we'll just take, uh, hmm. I guess, uh, so yeah, it, so if you go in here and uh, click, uh, let's say subject, uh, is equal or contains Q and A. And then just say I did an advanced mode and there you go, you get your expression. It's it's just a way to get your kind of filter expressions in here, copy that, put it into the trigger condition and remove this. I know it's, it's weird to <laughs> get it from here, but 
this edit in basic or advanced mode was all was there before in the the condition uh, action but they don't have it anymore over there so um, they still have it over here in this action so you can use that so let's delete that for now let's go back and see if yep there you go it actually ran um, so that confirms that yep it had a Q&A and that's why it ran um, so yep I get the let's see your compose um, March Q&A session so yep there you go you we got the so trigger conditions um, works fine <laughs> Uh, I definitely recommend you to go watch Audrey's video uh, in here. Um, she has it covered in more detail and um, you can you can learn more from that video. Yep, there's always a plan B, Keita. Uh, you always need to find that, how to work it out. Okay, uh, if there are no questions on trigger conditions, um, we we'll move on to the next topic. Uh, feel free to jump in if you have a question on trigger conditions. So the next one, uh, we want to get the Teams meeting URL. Um, so how did I do that? Um, so the reason why I'm using the Teams meeting URL because I need the Teams meeting URL to create the short link which I can then share in the team uh, in the tweet so that people can just click on the link and join the Teams meeting. So we are giving options to either join it directly or they can save the ICS. So let's cover the join directly part. So, so the thing, and let me jump on. So yeah, let me show you the expression. Um, I wonder, so Keita is asking if you, there's a limit on number of conditions you could use. Um, I am not sure about that. You can, I mean, basically you can add multiple conditions um, in that one condition itself. So you can expand it uh, by using the expressions or and or whatever uh, kind of logical operation you want to use and your expression could be as long as possible. Uh, but the add conditions, I, I think there might be a limit to that. I somehow remember it was 10, but I'm not sure. Uh, I'll have to check that, uh, but yeah. Good question, Geeta. Uh, but yeah, you can you can go <laughs> as long as you want. Um, so so yeah, going back to the Teams meeting URL. Um, let's uh, let's go to this. I have to put it into a notepad. So this is the expression that I'm using. And actually, before I show that expression, um, before I show you how I'm getting the URL, uh, I had to get rid of all the slash n, the kind of headline returns. Um, so when I get the, the description of the meeting, I was getting all slash ends, kind of basically the line kind of returns, and that was messing up um, kind of the, the Teams meeting URL that I wanted. So what I did was um, I used this expression. Um, so what I'm doing is first I'm converting my uh, body of the, the event um, into a URI component. So using the URI component expression, you can convert all your slash in to, like it, it basically converts it to percent, like I'm not sure exactly what's it called, but the ASCII kind of representation for that. So um, it's, it's a kind of a URI component. Um, so it will convert all the slash into percentage zero D and percentage zero A because I couldn't just remove slash and it was not was not working like that. You have to get that kind of character uh, to remove it. There might be some easier way to do it, but this is how it worked for me. So I'm replace first converting it to URI um, and then replacing all the slash n with basically blank and then again converting it back to a string. So that way I have, um, let's go to the notepad now. So this is basically the, the body of the um, event that I'm getting and it's an HTML. Um, so this is what I get from that uh, calendar trigger. 
So, so once I have this, and if you can, you can see all the slashes have been removed. I actually kind of formatted it just to make it easier to understand. Uh, but yeah, it will remove all the slash in using that first expression. So once we have that, uh, what we need is we need this URL. So this is your kind of body that's generated automatically for all your Teams meetings. It has a join Microsoft Teams meeting, learn more about Teams meeting options and all that stuff. So uh, what we want is basically the first URL. So um, what I'm doing, my first, so let's look at this substring. So this is the substring that I'm getting. So I'm start, I'm finding the index of where this HTTPS is starting. So I'm, I'm assuming there's no other URL before the Teams meeting kind of link in my uh, event. If I do generally, I mean, I know because I'm using this flow, I'll put all the links below the Teams meeting kind of uh, link. But yeah, um, it's kind of, you have to follow some kind of rules when you use such kind of flows. So I'm finding the, the index of where this HTTPS is starting. Um, and then I'm taking the substring from there. So I'm getting the string starting from HTTPS. And I'm just saying thousand and I'm just being conservative on, yeah, my URL uh, will be somewhere within thousand characters. I can go a bit more uh, than that, uh, but, and I'm pretty sure there's another easier way to get the URL. There might be some better expression, but this will work for me. So um, once I have this URL starting, I am then trying to find where it's ending. So the place it ends is where the double quotation mark, I mean, the, the double quotes are there. So I started my string from here till thousand characters. It might go up till here, let's say. Um, and then what I want to do is finding the index um, of the double quotes. So this is my index of the base, the same thing I'm repeating, and then I'm finding where this double quotes is. Um, yep, Brian, I'm stealing the Teams link. <laughs> So, so I'm starting the HTTPS from here, um, ending it till the double quotes, and yeah, basically scraping the URL. Um, so I'm, and there is no easier way to get the URL directly from the, the event invite. So I'm taking the Teams meeting link from the, uh, the body of the event. So this is the complex expression that I'm using. Um, again, there might be an easier way, but now we have the Teams meeting URL. So uh, let me show you that in my flow here. Um, so I know the copy paste right now is not working very nice. The copy paste uh, action in flow, uh, Power Automate, it's, it's screwed up a bit. <laughs> uh, so what we'll do is we'll just copy the expressions directly. Um, so this is my expression, uh, control C, let's go in here, add this expression, um, is invalid. Again, a quirky thing which you'll generally see, uh, if the first time you try to enter an expression, copy paste, it'll say, oh, it's wrong. And then you just again hit okay it works fine. <laughs> uh, again, another quirky thing which you will generally encounter in flow. Okay, so the next compose to get the URL. Um, compose and let's get this expression to get the Teams link. Uh, copy that and paste it here. Oop, not there. Expression. By the way, the new expression editor, I think is in preview right now, if I'm not wrong. So you'll have to enable experimental features somewhere. I think it's in the settings uh, to use that expression. Uh, so again, expression is invalid. No issues. And let me make sure I might, uh, yeah, it should work fine. So yep, 
we have this uh, expression to get the teams link and okay, let's save here. Uh, Brian, if you need the expression, uh, I'll be sharing the flow itself. Uh, so don't worry about that. <laughs> uh, let's uh, run. So yeah, if you this again, uh, if you if you have already a flow run, you can just resubmit it uh, instead of creating the event again uh, to just test your flow again. So it will it will take the new actions. So let's do resubmit. Okay. And compose and we got a URL. Bam, you got the Teams meeting URL here. This is what you need. All right, any questions on this? I see Brian putting his own kind of substring. Uh, expression. Hmm. So what? Hmm. Okay. I guess. Yeah. I mean, uh, as I told you, there might be an easier way or a different way to do it. But yep, you get the. You need to start the HTTPS starting. You need to find the end, and you get it. So yeah, Brian, you you took the Teams, uh, my kind of Teams link. So when I actually started this flow. Uh, I had used it to open meeting links automatically and I have a video for that. You can check it out um, on my YouTube channel uh, to open meeting links automatically. So um, it was also, so when I did it with HTTPS, even the Skype link started. So the Skype link start with meet.link.com. Um, so it scraped that URL as well and put it. So yeah, you can, you can restrict it to something um, which uh, you want to kind of restrict it to, but yeah, it. I'm just giving you kind of ways to do it. All right, so we have covered the uh, extracting URLs. The next thing is creating ICS files. Um, so let's do that. Uh, let's see actually if the copy to clipboard thing is working or not. So, oh, why doesn't it show? I just copied, copy to my clipboard. Okay. Oh, it's working. I guess something would have changed. So yep, this is the copy, um, copy action and paste action. So I'll copy this, I'll copy, you can copy multiple actions and then just paste it uh, one for one. So format end time and then I'll show you why I'm doing all those things. Okay, so I, this is the way I kind of did it and maybe I'm right, I'm wrong, I'm not sure. But what I'm doing is um, I am changing the, so the time that I get from this trigger, it's in UTC. I could have created the ICS, uh, you see that this ICS file thing didn't work here, so I might have to delete that action. Uh, and it's probably because I think the, so when you don't have that connector already added, it throws that error. So I, I, I don't know, we have to figure it out later on. Um, but yeah, let's do create, or uh, was it the OneDrive thing, right? So let's do OneDrive, sorry about that, let's do, OneDrive, create a file, create file, okay, and we'll see now. So, um, so yeah, I'm converting my start time into uh, Eastern time um, because I'm, that, I'm in that time zone. I could have kept it to the UTC and tried to create the invite and might have worked, but uh, I haven't tried that yet, but this is just the way it worked for me. So what I did here, and let me copy this expression and show it to you in a bigger file, uh, bigger screen, I guess. Um, so what I'm doing is um, I'm converting it from UTC to Eastern Standard Time. And then um, because the ICS format 
needs something specific it needs the it does so the the time that you get from the outlook has these dashes and colons but ics doesn't like that so you need to get rid of those dash and colons in your start time and end time so i'm removing uh, the start time i mean the dash and colons and then the ics kind of also doesn't need let me actually show you so that it makes sense uh, let's uh, let's save it actually and i have to delete this but actually yeah, i can show it to you uh, This is the power addicts one so i have a run history of one of those uh, so this should be the event so yeah uh the date time start time let's find the start time come on yeah so start time has dashes colons and then towards the end it has this whole dot the whole i mean there's some other formatting here which ICS doesn't, the creating an ICS file, it doesn't like. So what I've done is I removed the dash and colons and then just took these first 15 characters, I think. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, just the 15 characters. So I'm removing the colons, dashes, and just taking the 15 characters. That's what ICS uh, file kind of format likes it. Otherwise it messes up the ICS invite. Um, so what I've done is um, I've formatted the start time, formatted the end time to my time zone, and then we create these ICS files. So let's just put in my root folder for now. File name, um, demo, Q, N, A, ICS, and the file content. This is the main thing that we need. Um, so let's copy that. ICS file. So we copy this whole thing and I'll show you. So again, this, uh, there is a video by April Dunham on creating ICS files. Um, so you can have a look at that. Just look up her YouTube channel, ICS files, you should be able to find that. Uh, but yeah, there were some things in it, which if I use the same format, it was messing things up. So what I did was, and again, the other thing was even iOS didn't like that ICS. So you, so within ICS file, there are different formats and some of the formats iOS didn't like, and we kept getting replies on our PowerX Hangout saying, oh, it didn't open on my iOS phone. I had to open it in my web and show the wrong time and all that stuff. Um, so, uh, so what I did was I had, I found a website which created ICS um, files specifically for iOS. Um, I created an ICS file and then kind of backtracked from that. Um, I saw the, the format that they had used and then created this. So again, I'll be sharing this flow so you should be able to take that. But if you see here, it has all these time zone conversion kind of, uh, uh, if it's mainly for daylight savings, I know. The daylight savings is a, <laughs> we'll be going through that in the next week, I guess, here in US. Um, and yet it, it has to, the ICS needs that kind of thing so that it converts it to the correct time format. So uh, given all that, you need to specify the start time, which um, I'm using from my format start time and then format end time. My summary is the subject description is the uh, I might have to change this so description would be from this output over here uh, let's see mm, we need the board huh. why am I not getting that where's the trigger that's strange I need the cal uh, the body of the calendar, which somehow it's not showing up here. 
Hmm. Does he need a save or something? No? Okay. So, what has happened is uh, when I try to copy paste, it broke the flow. So, right now, don't use copy paste. It's breaking the, but the good thing is it didn't save it. So I still have um, the original flow. So you might have to go back to editing. Yep, we have lost some things. Uh, what I'll do is I know the form, the, these two copy paste work fine. So we'll just copy paste those things. And that shouldn't hopefully break the flow. Yeah, those are working fine. But yeah, don't copy paste uh, an action which has a connection link to it right now. It's not working. Um, yeah, Brian, I, I'm not sure. When, you, when I paste, it just kind of breaks the connections of everything that is there in the flow. So, so yeah, I, I would, I, I know, I think it's a bug and it's being worked on. So we, we hope that it will be rectified soon. So let's go to our creating file again, create file, OneDrive, uh, select root, name of the file, we will say test demo, ICS dot ICS so we need the dot ICS format as well. Yep, it as uh, so yeah, Brian. I was trying to copy it from another flow, which generally works fine, um, but right now it's not. Uh, so the file content. Let's copy that one more time. Copy, paste and it should be fine now. So description, I just need to change this to, again, it's doing the same thing. Ah, I don't know why it's doing that. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this flow instead. We'll, uh, I'll just show it to you over here where I have already created. Um, and what we'll do is we'll uh, put like, uh, what I generally do is, yeah, let's, let's just see on this flow and then uh, I'll probably remove some of these actions so that we don't run those. Uh, and I can copy paste from another flow till then. Um, so yeah. What I'm doing is I'm creating the ICS file, um, then creating the share link. So this sharing link, if you don't know about that action, uh, you can generate uh, links to your uh, OneDrive files. OneDrive. Uh, let's see, Brian, if I can do that. Hmm. Good point. Come on, work. Yeah, it doesn't like that even. Yeah, it doesn't show up here. Yep, it just doesn't show anything. So we might have to figure that out later, but yep, so OneDrive, um, and then there's a create share link. So yep, that's what we are using. And then um, you need to give the ID of the file. So we'll take it from, so that's what I've used here. So I'm taking the ID from what I've created here. The link type is view. So you can select different types. Um, this is um, like a download link. So I'm just putting it as a view and then link scope is anonymous. Um, now this depends on, I mean, this is my personal tenant and I have enabled guest access to, uh, but yeah, if your organization doesn't allow it, it might not let you do that. So anonymous makes it sure that anybody can access that link. So yeah, we have created the sh share link. So this, so 
the ICS file, the only thing to, again, is you just need to follow this format. And if you can follow the format and what I'll do is, I know this won't work right now for you, but if you want to try it out to change some things, copy it, I'll just paste it in the chat. Um, I know it will be a big kind of message, but yeah, you can copy paste. And if you want to change some things, you can try it out. But yeah, this is what I'm using to create the ICS file and then sharing the link. So now um, I have the ICS file created. I have the Teams link. Uh, now what I need to do is I need to create the short links um, so that uh, we can share it in a nice kind of URL. So what we're doing, I'm using Rebrandly. By the way, any questions on the ICS before I move to that? Feel free to unmute yourself or ask in the chat. Okay. Um, so the rebrandly, it's similar to Bitly. Um, and uh, it's the only difference is you can change the destination you are at. So let's say I have a link uh, and this is one link that we are using poweraddicts.family. So we recently created this, um, kind of got the domain poweraddicts.family uh, as a URL, as a sh uh, and then we have this join a slide. So this URL doesn't, um, it just remains the same. We just change the destination URL for it. So if I show you that link, um, come on, edit. Yeah, so you can see a lot of things where people have clicked it from and all that, but the destination URL is this Teams meeting link. But what I can do is I can change it to anything else. Um, so that feature is not there in Bitly. Uh, Rebrandly offers you that feature to change the destination URL so that you can have the same short URL, but you can change the destination um, URL anytime. And yes, uh, Brian, so you can buy domains on uh, Rebrand itself and all these short domains are pretty cheap to buy. Um, this one, we actually got it for free as a part of some deal. They, they actually changed some things recently and then you can, um, uh, so if you have a rebrandy URL, if you're just using rebrand.ly, they recently introduced that, announced that they won't allow you to change the destination URLs. So that sucks. But if you have your custom domain, so even if you have, let's say your own personal website and I have that link, so I have my that API guide.tech, but the only difference is I can, I'll have to create a subdomain um, so that it I can create the short links for that. So you have to make some settings on your blog um, to make that happen. But yeah, you can register the custom domain as well. So links dot that API got API guide dot tag and then slash and then I can put anything so I can generate custom kind of you um, related to my blog as well. So um, I now that we know that we're using that, let's see the API. Um, that's what I'm here to talk about, right? <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll create a new link and also update an existing link. Uh, so in here, what I'm doing, and I think I changed uh, the API key. So I generated two API keys, so don't try to copy paste it. I'll be changing or deleting it after this video. Um, so this is the short, uh, once we got the share link, um, so yep. Uh, we uh, we are creating this uh, kind of new short link. So let's go to the API free brandly. Only if uh, come on. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, there you go. So this is the API. So once you kind of register for uh, rebrandly, you get an account you can uh, create an API key uh, and then use that API key to use their API. There's no additional cost to that. 
Um, so this is the way you be creating. So you need to do a post request to this API endpoint, and then you need to define in the JSON kind of body what do you need in that, like basically the slash tag, the title of the URL, the domain. So if you have multiple domains in your uh, rebrandly, um, you need to specify the domain, otherwise it just uses the rebrandly domain. And then if you want to put any description. So let's go back. Um, what I've done is post request. I have the URI here, um, the API endpoint. Um, I think I don't need these. Um, I don't know why I put it in here, but yeah, I can get remove those. I am basically passing all those things in the body here. The title is the subject of the event, the slash tag. So this is what I converted. Now this is this was for Power Addicts Hangout. So what I'm doing is my expression, if you see here, I'm converting it to a lower string and replacing everything except Power Addicts Hangout. Um, uh, what I'm doing. So what I'm doing was so that the way I was setting up Power Addicts Hangout was uh, I, I set it up in my calendar as Power Addicts Hangout March 2020. So it converts that March 2020 um, to short case and power addicts hangout. I think we, we changed it to, it. yeah, so I'm thinking about this now. So I'm, I'm removing power addicts hangout from the title because the links that we have uh, is called powerx.family slash March 2020. So we just need a month. The short domain kind of defines that it's the power addicts hangout link. So I'm removing Power Addicts Hangout um, uh, and making, just replacing it with blank. And then I'm taking, uh, putting the, the month into kind of a lower string. So for this uh, video, um, I know this is not working. So what we'll do is we'll change this. And just because we know in this case, we are just gonna call it March Q and A. Oop. Not there. Let's name it here. March Q and A. I don't need these here in the queries, so I can remove that. Um, March. So it will create a link. Um, actually, it will create it. Let's let's remove the domain. It will select rebrand is the domain. So I will remove that. Um, to get the domains, you can go, there's another kind of API endpoint for that uh, to get your domains. So you can get the domain ID from there. Um, but yeah, we will not get into that for now. We just created the rebrandly link. So what this will do is it will create a rebrandly slash March Q and A as a link, a short link, and we can use that. So um, the other thing which I'm doing here is updating the short link. Uh, for joining the Teams meeting. So this is just another endpoint. We don't need to show it in this video, uh, but what for Power Addicts Hangouts, what we are doing is we were changing that uh, poweraddicts.family slash join us live link uh, to the recent Teams meeting. So uh, in this case, I don't need that. Uh, I just need to um, this is the ICS, uh, March q and So this will be ICS. Um, what we need is we basically need the same thing again. So uh, I'll copy the same thing. I don't need to update. This was for updating link, but I just need to create a new link. Um, I'll copy paste the same thing for the Teams meeting. So let's paste this uh, instead of the web URL uh, what I'll be using is the teams meeting link and that was teams link okay so let's take that output teams link so yeah the destination will be the teams link and this we will call March Q&A teams link okay uh, and this one, just to kind of show you guys, you were also 
because there were multiple time zones involved and everyone was like oh what time zone is it for me i i <laughs> we don't know so instead of putting any time now what we have decided is we'll just show them uh, like the day and uh, we'll just put a time zone kind of conversion link and i know uh, reza also is using it for the houston kind of power uh, power apps and power automated user loop but this is a good resource to actually use so it's the time and date.com um, you can set up basically the url if you see changes based on what you select the date as so what we did was i created this i added the locations some of the common locations where people join us from uh, and the time what it sees there so what i can do is if you see here the iso is basically the date so I just need to format, give the date in this format, and it will generate the link automatically every month based on the date of the event. So what we are doing is if you see here, this is my substring. Again, the same thing, I'm getting the start time and putting it uh, in here as the ISO. So this will be like a time zone checking link. Again, is this if this is something that you need to use, um, feel, I mean, this is a great way to share um, meeting kind of time and to so, so that everybody can see it in their time zone so in this case we won't use it let's uh, just remove it for now um, so yeah we have the teams meeting short link we have the create a new short link for the sharing ICS 5 the only thing that's remaining which I'll show you in a minute is the, the Twitter API. So, um, so just so this is my way of kind of not doing a flow action. I know Geeta kind of talks about it. Uh, she says to use scope. Uh, there, it just if it's different uh, people kind of using different ways to use uh, to not run parts of flow. So I just put if x equal to y. Uh, do this so it won't do it <laughs> uh, and the delay is uh, just I mean I'll show you why I'm using the delay later so uh, I know I haven't changed some things here let me make sure that we will run this flow with the correct things um, see so, yep, if this should work fine teams link should work fine okay flow checker something wrong should be fine let's see what's it enter the valid JSON this seems to be valid to me what's wrong here this is another kind of quirky thing I don't know why it does that sometimes don't need a comma here Anybody can help me. <laughs> Let's cut it, paste it again. Nope, doesn't like it. Need codes, oh, that's right. Thanks, Gilbert. Yep, so if you take an input from a previous kind of dynamic content, it, it takes care of that. But yeah, if you don't, it needs these codes. All right, yeah, it's working fine. Thanks again, Gilbert. So, yep, that's, uh, so now we have done that. We, what we'll do is, uh, I think it should have run. Oh, it's weird, it might have run <laughs> for the other thing. Let's see, uh, I probably tweeted out something. Well, let's see it doesn't have because it's not turned on that's good so yeah when you create a copy it doesn't turn it on by default so you'll have to turn it on and now it's turned on so i'll create this event again um just so that it turns on the flow let's uh create a new event come on to the next month 
uh, I just don't want to call. Yeah, okay. Uh, new event. Let's again put it for 28th March. Put it on the same time. I might just do this event because we are creating it from here. <laughs> Uh, let's put it two, two, three. Uh, it's a team's meeting. And then we'll say March Q&A session. Okay, so now that I have this, I'll hit save. Uh, and this should make our flow run. Oh, it already started, that was pretty quick. that it has started let's see if it works fine flow run failed somewhere yeah oh didn't take the oh, okay that's good i had to remove the function so yeah all the things work fine so actually let's see if it generated the links um, we refresh this. Uh, it should have generated the link. So let's see that. Oh, it actually used my the Power Artist start family for some reason. <laughs> uh, did I not change the domain? I guess March Q and A session, and I it should have been the other one. Uh, parts that family. Uh, I hmm, that's strange. Let's check here. Let's so create the new short link. Uh, oh, I had the domain thing here. Hmm, I guess I didn't remove it from that one. So it did create the March QA session under the Power Artists family domain. Uh, and then the update the short link. Oh, sorry, we were just creating a new link. So uh, destination. Oh, I think it might have messed up something before. So I might have to go back and change it. I think it just didn't, I, I don't know if I saved it. I thought I did, but I think it didn't take the save. I guess I didn't save it then. I would have posted a tweet as well. Ah, that's bad. Let's let's delete that tweet first. I don't want the tweet. Can we one minute? Yeah, we don't want that tweet. <laughs> yeah, so I think it didn't remove things that's strange ah come on Ooh. okay and then create new short link yep it just didn't make the changes i guess for some reason But I guess you get the point. Uh, these are just flow issues. <laughs> uh, you forget to save or something and it messes up things. March Q and A. Live. Okay. Yep, I might have to go back and change the Teams meeting link for the previous one because I think it messed up our Power Addicts Hangout link. Um, so anyways, so that's that's how you kind of change uh, or use the rebrand the API. The authentication is pretty easy. You just use the API key and um, you can create links, you can update links. There's a lot of things that you can do with it. Um, so you can delete one can add a tag and all that stuff. So 
there's a lot that you can do with the API. It's a simple API key based authentication. Um, now, so yeah, um, if there are any questions, let me know on that. I guess the flow just didn't save it. So let's make sure we save it this time. And the last thing that I want to cover is the OAuth 1.0 connection using the Twitter API. Um, so let's go to the, so I do have a blog post on it. Um, and let me share that link here quickly if you haven't looked at it. Um, let me paste the link quickly. Um, so yeah, I have a blog post that kind of goes through the whole thing of setting it up. So um, do kind of, I mean, if you want to kind of follow the step-by-step -step thing, go over there and check it out. What I want to cover, we I know we only have like 12 minutes. So uh, what I want to show you is how I actually used it to send DMs uh, to some Twitter users. So before I do that, let me show you how actually the DMs look like. Uh, I will share my phone. And you can send DMs to yourself. Um, so I'm not kind of showing the chat <laughs> of anyone else. So I'm using this thing called A Power Mirror here. Uh, so you can see here, you can send DMs. So these are the DMs that I send using the API. And uh, I've put some options as well. Uh, I know there's some spelling mistakes, but um, you can put options so that if I kind of choose one of these, I can just, like, let's say I choose add text and tweet. Uh, it will actually open it. I've created the URL in such a way that it will add the URL of the tweet and then I can put any text that I want to and then uh, kind of tweet about it. So, okay, I'm at 1% on my battery, so <laughs> might turn off pretty soon. Uh, but yeah, the reason I wanted to show you this was you you can use this for anything, right? I mean, you can um, send DMs on some kind of, if you have like organizers of the meeting or a group of people who you want to send the details about the event so that they can promote it. Um, you can schedule it, right? You can schedule it one day before, two days before, a week before and all that. You can do all that in the flow itself and then send it to people. So for the Power Addicts Hangout, we just started using this and uh, we were looking at uh, just uh, sending a DM directly to some of the people so that they can promote about it. So, um, yep, Brian, I'm just reading your comments. So it is adaptive, kind of an adaptive card. Uh, there are, so there is more things that you can do with it uh, if you have the premium kind of Twitter API, if you're like an enterprise or something. So you can almost do live kind of things as well. But for our use case, we just wanted to send DMs. Um, does it do photos? So photos um, is, is possible. Uh, I think it requires some more digging into the Twitter API. Uh, the, so the Twitter API, to post kind of um, photos, you first need to call that API endpoint to upload an image, and then uh, it gives you a URL to the image, um, like a Twitter kind of URL to the media, and then you need to use that media URL in the in the tweet, something like that. So I have I know I I want to try it out, but I have not yet reached that point. It, so I'll show you why I have not done that yet. So let me show you how I kind of set it up. So you have to create your app, kind of you log into it, developer API, click on apps, uh, generate the kind of key token and everything. And once you have set that up, uh, you need to create an Azure function. Again, I'll kind of run through this here, but you can, I have all the things in my blog post so you can go step by step. Uh, so what we are using is an Azure function um, and, and the Azure function, you can paste this code basically. So it, so what it allows you to do is it allows you to call any endpoint um, of the Twitter API. You can 
defined. So that's your resource. Uh, your method will be either get or post or patch, update, whatever it is. Um, parameters, uh, if it's a get request, you send parameters. If it's a uh, post request, you want to send it in the body. So it's like the post body. So this was something that I added uh, all till this, I had gotten from another blog post, but this was not there. And this is where I think uh, I need to do something so that I can upload images as well. The script has that option to do the upload thing, but it was not working fine. So I have not gone beyond it. Um, but yeah, I'll have to do some more tweaking on it so that I, the, the image thing also works. Um, so yeah, once you have this kind of Azure function set up, what you basically need is uh, just that Twitter kind of API endpoint. So what we are using is it's a call to action object that we need in our message. Um, and we're using this kind of Twitter uh, messages endpoint. So let's uh, go back to the flow. I'll show you quickly. Um, so I'm sending it to all some of the Twitter users. So um, the way you actually do is, and let me show you that quickly. So this is kind of the URL that you'll see for any of the messages. So if you go to twitter.com, uh, messages um, in your DM, you'll see there'll be an ID dash ID. So this is ID of a user and ID of the another. So one ID will be yours and one ID will be the another user. So that's where you get the user ID. You can use the Twitter API itself to get the user ID, but it's like, a, I don't know, like 10, 11 characters uh, number basically. So you need to get the user ID who you need to send the DM to. So I just hard coded it. I know some of the people that I need to send it to. I got their user IDs and put it in the flow. Uh, this is basically me sending a message to myself so that I could paste the URL. Uh, I mean, I could get the ID here. So um, what I'm doing is I'm first defining the body that I want to send. So this is my event type message create within the message create. This is how I'm creating that whole uh, kind of, uh, how do I say this? So recipient ID is the ID of the user message data. I'm putting power addicts hangout promotion request. Um, and then I'm putting the, I guess I should have put the link here. Uh, yep. I think it got removed for some reason. So I'll have to put it again. Um, but yeah, I'll put the, the link of the tweets, the tweet shows up and then I have these call to actions that you, I just showed you on my phone. So I can define the type of call to actions. So if you see here, the call to actions could be a web URL. Um, I think there are some other types of call to actions as well. Uh, you can look it up. Uh, I think the type, I think, yeah, it should be on the web. I guess right now it's on the web URL. I don't know if there's some other way. So yeah, you can go to the developer uh, reference and see if there is more possibilities. I, I'm not sure. I just tried something and it worked. So I'm just using it. it covers my use case. Um, it would be interesting to see what all you can do with it. So yeah, I'm defining the different types of actions and then what's the URL to call for each of those actions. Uh, so once I have that, um, what I'm doing is, is I'm calling my Azure function. So to get the Azure function URL, you need to click on get function URL um, and then just paste the URL. I know you might think this is not secure. Yes, it's not secure. <laughs> if anybody has the Azure function, your Azure function URL, they can make a request to it. Um, so there is a way to uh, kind of do it. And I have not explored that yet. Again, I'm not a, Azure kind of, I would say uh, an expert, but uh, Azure function expert. But yeah, I think there are ways to uh, limit, uh, you can authenticate it as well. So uh, I'm pretty sure you can find that out. Uh, but yeah, so once you have the Azure function URL, you're basically may say, yeah, whitelist IPs, that's right. So that's one other way you can do that. Uh, but yeah, look that up. You should be able to do that. Um, 
So once you have the URL, I mean URL of your Azure function pasted over here, and then um, what you need to do is you need to define the resource that's a direct messages method is post. Um, there's no parameter here, but and the post body is your body from here. The reason why I did that in a separate kind of compose was if I pasted this JSON as it is in here, it somehow said that this JSON, I mean, if even if I put it within codes, it recognized that your JSON is not correct. Uh, so I had to put it in a compose and then put it in an output here. So uh, what I'll do is, uh, let me see. So yeah, that's I think how I created uh, the DM. Uh, let me see if I can show you a run history. Yeah, this is the run history, which I actually sent it to some of the people um, to promote. So yeah, you can see it sent this post request uh, to users uh, with the, the call to action. It's similar to what I just showed you on my phone, but yeah, that's how it would look like when you run it. I know I had to kind of quickly go through it, but are there any questions? I know Brian, you want images? We will get there soon. <laughs> uh, anything else that I could cover? Any questions? Hmm. Yep, you can DM yourself, Brian. Let me stop sharing, I guess. All right. Um. <laughs> I. I don't know if you can message yourself, but you can do, you can use Flow to send your yourself messages, right? So, um, but yeah, uh, if there are any questions, happy to kind of answer to that, even just send a tweet or send me a DM. Maybe use this to send me a DM through Flow. Uh, but yeah, I know there are multiple steps in this and we didn't start there. Uh, we started with something simple and we kept kind of making it more sophisticated, I would say more fancy, but yeah, it, it's working for us great now. And I just create that event in my tenant on Paranix Hangout and it just does everything. We have the tweet, everything in there. So it's all automated. Uh, the ICS is working fine now, the short links work fine uh, and it sends a DM. I know Geeta was uh, talking about of putting some schedule on it so that we can uh, send the DMs on a kind of one day before, two days before, so that people can then promote. Like, it's like poking people to do it, right? So, uh, so yeah, you can do a bunch of things. Uh, just when you use a Twitter API, just make sure that you don't send a lot of requests to a lot of people. It might kind of time you out. There's some limit, like limits on the number of requests you can make. But yep, uh, if there isn't anything else, thank you everyone for joining. Um, I'll be posting this as a recording as well, so you can see it later. But yep, thank you and uh, have a good leap day. Uh, enjoy the extra day. Thank you everyone. I'll stay on if somebody has any questions, but yep, I'll stop the recording here.